Okay, we're going to talk about the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. Convergence and probability in the law of large numbers. We're, let's define y, the random variable y. If y, 1 through yn, this is going to be yi, or iid, and sigma squared y, the variance of y, variance of y is finite or less than infinity, then y bar is a consistent estimator of mu y, the expected value of y. Okay, we talked about taking the expected value of y, um, uh, or expected value of y bar in the previous lecture. Now we're talking about something a little different. This is consistency. And this is the probability that y bar minus mu y is less than some small value epsilon trends towards 1 or 100% as n goes to infinity. Whew, there's a lot in there. What does this all mean? The, what we're getting at is the absolute difference between y bar and the population mean. Okay, y bar, remember, is a sample average. So it depends on the sample size and the, the sample that's drawn. Uh, mu y is a constant. It's the population mean. And the difference between the population mean and the sample average the sample mean this part here that's getting what this is saying is it's getting smaller and smaller that difference is getting smaller and smaller and the probability that that difference is is super small less than some value epsilon the probability that that thing is super small is equal to one or trends towards one or 100 percent as n increases so remember that the variance of y bar decreases as n goes to infinity, right? So the variance sigma squared y bar is equal to 1 over n uh, times sigma squared y. And so as n goes to infinity, what happens to sigma squared y bar? As n goes to infinity, uh, sigma squared y bar goes to 0. Why? Because we have something in the denominator here going to infinity. So that says that the variance goes to zero, which really means that we're getting closer and closer to the population mean. In other words, an estimator is consistent if the probability that it, it falls within an interval, it falls within an interval of the true population value tends to one as the sample size increases. Ah, and I have that part there. Convergence and probability or consistency is written as y bar converges in probability to mu y. So we can use this to talk about the law of large numbers. If yi for i equals 1 to n or iid with expected value of y equal to mu y and the variance of y is finite or outliers are unlikely, then y is a consistent estimator or converges in probability to mu y. In other words, when n is large, y will be close to mu y with high, very high probability. However, it says we can rest easy. Uh, this is the key issue that scientists face um, when we're doing research. We'll never really, we're never completely certain, but it, this log tells us that we can rest easy if our sample size n is large. So that begs the question, what is large? Um, we can get to that later in the course. The main conditions are yi or iid. The variance of y is finite, which holds in most contexts. Um, the variance of student height is finite. There are only the only um, finite variance I've ever really been able to come up with is the average distance to other solar systems, uh, because the the universe is infinite. Um, that's the example for when uh, variance is non-finite is infinite. Okay, so the central limit theorem. We can now define the central limit theorem, or the CLT. If y, if the var random variable y, yi, or iid, and the variance is, uh, is, it has a variance, it's not zero, and it's, it's a finite variance, then when n is large, the distribution of y bar is well approximated by a normal distribution. Now this, this theorem is gonna be super, super important as we go forward. 
Okay, a key concept. The CLT does not say that the distribution of yi, the random variable, does not say that this thing can be approximated with a normal distribution. So yi might be Bernoulli, distributed Bernoulli, might take on two values, might have a chi-squared distribution, might have a skewed distribution, might be any distribution. But what the central lim limit theorem says is if we draw a sample from this population, a sample from this random variable yi, and we compute some sample statistic, let's say y bar. <clears throat> we saw in the previous lecture that y bar has a distribution which depends on the samples that are drawn and the sample sizes. The central limit theorem says that the distribution of y bar can be approximated by a normal. That's super important. And the sampling distribution does not depend on the underlying distribution of the random variable. So the distribution of y bar doesn't depend on y, the distribution of yi. Another way to see this is the central limits theorem says when n is large, y bar is approximately normal with mean mu y and variance sigma squared y. For example, if yi is chi squared with m degrees of freedom or distributed chi squared with m degrees of freedom, so y yi might have a distribution that looks something like this. Then y bar still has a normal distribution when n is large. <coughs> That's the distribution of y bar. Maybe we can normalize it and put it in zero. Let's look at some examples of this. Okay, I switched some slides here. We've got um, these examples straight from the book of the central limit theorem. So we have a, ran, a Bernoulli random variable with n possible draws. And let's see what, um, see how this distribution of the sample average looks like. So the book has defined this as, um, do we have, let's just say that Bernoulli random variable x, whoops, sorry about that. Bernoulli random variable x is equal to one with probability uh, p, which is equal to 0 0.78. So here, p is not 1 half, is 0.78. And 0 with probability 1 minus 0 0.78, right? So this is our Bernoulli random variable. Then the book is saying, all right, what? right, let's, let's do a bunch of samples, draw a bunch of samples with n equals 2. That's this first part here. Um, see if I can blow this up just a little for you. So what are the possible outcomes when n equals two? We can have zero, zero. So that's, if we take, if we get zero, zero, what's the sample average of zero, zero? It's zero plus zero divided by two, which is still zero. And so that's what we're seeing here. Um, we can get zero and one or one and zero. The sample average of that is going to be 1 plus 0 divided by 2, which is 50%. That's that bar there. And we can also get 1 and 1. Um, so 1 plus 1 divided by 2, that sample average is going to be 1. So this is showing, okay, if we'd had a probability of 0.5, then we would have a much larger bar at 0.5. But since the probability is a little higher than 0.5, it's 0.78. Um, uh, this is the probability of getting a one, then we get more mass in the one column here. So this is the distribution of the sample average, the sampling distribution of the sample average with n equals two. What happens if we go to n equals five? The next chart here. Um, so there's now gonna be five different outcomes. We can, have, we can still have zero. The probability of getting zero is pretty small now. You can see there's really nothing here. Um, the probability of getting one is still fairly large. Probability of getting 0.78 or whatever this bar is, is kind of the largest. So this is the distribution of y of x bar. This is the distribution of x bar when n equals five. So sample sizes of five. What if we do n equals 25? Okay, so let me just, to be extremely clear, what are the possible outcomes when n equals five? Let's go back to the previous one. Uh, we could have 
uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We could have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And you can see how this could take quite a while. We could have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, etc. Um, so there's a lot of different possible outcomes as soon as we go to n equals 5 or n equals 25. Um, and for each of these, we're going to calculate the sample average. So the sample average here would be x bar, um, which is just summing up the zeros, dividing by 5 is equal to 0. Summing up these, dividing by 5, it would be 1 fifth, etc. And that's what we're plotting here, the distribution of x bar same here, x bar when uh, n equals 25. Now this thing's starting to look more like a bell-shaped curve, right? It's a little more like a bell-shaped curve. It's still skewed a little to the left, but it's looking a little more uh, like a bell-shaped curve. And that, remember, is what the central limit theorem is getting at. It's telling us that um, as n increases, we went from n equals 2 to n equals uh, 5 to n equals 25. Now we're at n equals 100. This thing's looking much more symmetric. It's looking much more like a normal distribution. So the central limit theorem, remember, it says uh, regardless of the underlying distribution of the random variable, so xi is distributed Bernoulli with p equals 0 0.78, x bar has a normal distribution with mu x and sigma squared x bar. And that's what we're seeing here. xi, we didn't plot the distribution of xi, we we're plotting the distribution of x bar. Okay, now the book is, is standardizing this random variable for you. It's doing the exact same thing as the previous, um, the previous slide, but it's standardizing. Remember, standardizing is subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. And then they're also drawing the standard normal distribution above that. So here we have n equals 2 again, uh, but it's standardized. Same thing as up here. We have three bars. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't really resemble a, a normal distribution n equals five it's looking i mean it's fitting a little better n equals 25 it's looking pretty good n equals 100 it looks quite a bit like a standard normal distribution so that's that's pretty good this is the central limit theorem in action how about from a skewed distribution so now we have a, a random variable that's drawn from a skewed distribution. Does it still work? It does. So now maybe x is distributed chi squared with some degrees of freedom, right? And that's what this just this distribution here is. Well, that's not actually the distribution of the, the random variable, but that's the distribution of the sample averages from a random variable with a chi squared distribution. Actually, it is. Uh, I take that back. This is the distribution of the underlying random variable because n equals 1. Uh, for n equals 5, now we're getting um, a little bit more like it's fitting the standard normal, but still we're missing some mass over here. For n equals 25, we're still missing a bit there, but it's looking better. n equals 100, um, the distribution of x bar is looking a lot more like a standard normal random variable. So this is the central limit theorem in action. Um, I can't say it enough. This is a really neat uh, theorem, really important. Gets you this really wonderful result that we rely on a lot in statistics.